Welcome, everybody, to the Building Aaronsburg podcast. I'm Thomas Aaronsburg. And I'm Catherine Aaronsburg. And in today, episode four, can't believe we're already to four episodes, but here we are. <laughs> um, I think this is one that a lot of it, at least what I gather from the people that have sent questions to your Instagram, um, I think this is one that people really want to hear about. And what we're going to talk a lot about today um, is executing executing the job. The name of this episode I put, This Is It, Don't Get Scared Now, which is a reference to Home Alone when Kevin <laughs> McAllister is defending his house from the wet bandits, and he had this elaborate plan, like he wanted to do it, but then he actually had to go out and put out the micro machines and you know, put the hot thing on the door this and throw the water. slightly messed on me, but... Anyway, if you I'm watched you Home Alone, if you were born in the most <laughs> awesome period of time, <laughs> the 1980s, of the 80s, you get this reference. <laughs> um, so some of the things that we're going to tackle today uh, are things that I feel like people really want to know about us. Number one is where did we learn to do all this stuff? Where did where did you learn how to do all this designing? Yeah. Where did I learn how to do all of the beautiful craftsmanship? Then. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. We're going to have to get some more people on this podcast so that we aren't constantly patting ourselves on the back. We'll I don't let think someone we, else. I don't think we pat ourselves on the back a whole lot. We'll let someone actually. else come in and pat our backs for us. <laughs> um. So let's let's start there. I, I have, have a say, couple other things that that I think people want to know about, but that's definitely one that that people that I get a lot. Even people ask about it to me. One of the questions that people ask most often is. Basically, what you're saying, how do you guys execute at such a high level? In my own family of extremely motivated people, they call it Catherine Speed. We don't work at Catherine Speed. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No. Yeah. I'm like the hyper speed girl. Like, home construction gets done at Catherine Speed or it gets done at another one of my siblings' speed. There's a, there's uh, a high and there's a low. I, think I know which one. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so we are considered to be high execution. Okay. For if we say we're going to do it, we start it, we finish it, we get so it done. So let it be written. That's right. So let it be done. That's your. I saying. have a lot of quotes. For those of you that decide to stick around for this podcast, you'll hear me say things over and over again. <laughs> That's one. I you'll said s- one in the last episode. Pronto stat five. That's as that's as urgent as something can be done. You is know, that from a movie you, or something, or is that just from your childhood? No, I think I just that made it like up. That sounds like a Grandpa Aaronsburg. I think I just made it up one day, but it sounds good. Like, mm. it means fast. Pronto. I know what fast. it means, but I've been around a while. Stat means fast. All right. So, back to our construction background. We don't have one. I don't, I don't have a construction background. That's not true. That's not true. That is so not true. Yeah, I didn't, I don't Mm-mm. have any formal training. No, that's not, but that's not work. what, I wouldn't consider that to be your background. Let me just say, as a child, I helped my dad cut grass and fix lawnmowers and um, what else? Do plumbing underneath houses and all kinds of outside stuff. Right, I watched so, him do all kinds of things. I was very hands-on when it came to any kind of construction and repair that he was doing. Right. You and your brothers built an entire, like, that was converted your parents' entire garage. It, it was a into a, a high school band room and college version of a little kid building a treehouse. It doesn't matter. The fact that you guys went out there and you did it. The sheetrock job was terrible. Yes, but you knew all of it was terrible. But you had gone to the you had gone to the hardware store and you had you knew that there was a difference between half inch sheetrock and we knew there was concrete a because board one and, was cheaper. Uh huh. And we bought the cheapest stuff. So. For those of you that don't know what we're talking about, which is probably most of you, when when I graduated college, growing up, my parents always had this, it was a garage. It was way detached. in the back of their property. Yeah. And the whole time that we lived there, it was just full of junk. There were probably all kinds of rodents living in there. But we decided when you know, I stayed home for college, so me and my brothers decided we were going to turn this into like a man cave, like the most coolest place to be and so we called it the cool room naturally i mean and the dumbest that's what we name did. I mean, like for... we, we completely <laughs> gutted it yeah put up sheetrock put down carpet <laughs> yeah built a stage it was 
put it up was something. very custom with a K job. Yeah. But that was, yeah, that was, so that was probably you did my electrical first work. building experience. Yes, not to code. No, it wasn't. You definitely are lucky you didn't I burn knew, the place down. Oh, absolutely. That place should have burned down a hundred times because. Mm-hmm. You put like two twenty. those of you that don't know a little bit about electricity, there are breakers in your house that trip, you know, when a circuit gets overloaded. Most houses have either 15 amp or 20 amp breakers, depending on, on what purpose they serve. So like lights don't pull a lot of amperage they're probably on a 15 amp breaker whereas most of your outlets are probably 20 amp because they have to run things like a microwave or a vacuum which pull you know five to eight amps depending on on what the appliance is well i i knew we would have tvs and guitar amps and all kinds of cool stuff in there and so i was like we need 30 amp breakers 30 amps 30 amps typically run Kind of your bigger a dryer, like a dryer, <laughs> right? We didn't have a dryer in there. You're like the guy on Step Brothers. You're like more power. Yes. Oh, Tim the Tool Man Taylor. So here's that here's the problem though. The if you buy a bigger breaker, you need a bigger wire mm-hmm. because now you're you're, you're letting putting, you're letting more current through. So you need a wire that can handle the current. You're putting 15 amp. We were because we were cheap, you know, 14 gauge wire which carries the 15 amp breaker which the cheapest wire there was so let's use that yeah. with the 30 amp breaker so it's basically like if you took a fire hose and hooked it up to a garden hose and then opened the fire hose wide open mm-hmm. that garden hose would like blow up yeah somehow it survived somehow it didn't and that room is still standing today but it should have <laughs> we just got very lucky all i'm getting at is that both of us had were we were not afraid of a power tool. We were not afraid. That's true. Because it, there have been times since where I've helped people use power tools, specifically women, and they're afraid to even touch them. They're afraid that well, they're going to cut you, themselves with them. When you pull the trigger of a power tool, sure, it ramps up of, fast. A lot of force behind it. It's, yes, it can be. It is scary. Yes. the first time you do it, it is. Although, again, I mean. My mom was one, I say I was around with my dad a lot, which I was, and he was always the one who was doing, fixing, you know, mowers and and, uh, all kinds of engines and things like that. And then also cutting grass and edging and doing all the chores outside, basically, was what I was helping them with. And then my parents had family homes elsewhere that belonged to their parents and things like that, that we were helping with. And that's where I learned the plumbing. We re-plumbed underneath the house and did all that type stuff. Um, But my mom was the the artsy creative one that she wanted to do all kinds of art projects. And sometimes those included power tools. Like one time I can remember she wanted to make a Rudolph the red nosed reindeer, like wooden cutout for her mailbox. It would sit over the mailbox. She went out and got the reciprocating saw and cut it out. Reciprocating saw or jigsaw? Hopefully a jigsaw. Oh, jigsaw. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Jigsaw. That would be. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that would That's be pretty unfortunate. intense work. Yeah. No, she used a jigsaw. Um, and I watched her do it. And so there was never any thought that I couldn't do it. It was just like, that's what we do. You just go right. get the tool you need and you do it. I don't know. I mean, I never thought twice about it. About cutting your finger off. No. Or no. Never. Shooting a nail or screw nope. through your hand. Nope. Not worried about Which it. Which I've done. It doesn't, it's not pleasant. Uh, I would say the other thing that I did make a note part of my experience um is stuff always broke around our house it it would be anything i mean like the radio the cd player wouldn't play anymore and instead of throwing stuff out i would take and i would open it up because you love to tinker and try to figure it out yeah and sometimes i could put it back together and And most of the time i couldn't and i think that a lot of people that's that's actually part of their question secretly is, you know, in hidden parentheses, how do I get my spouse to be more motivated to do this stuff? And it's it's just like any other hobby, I think. You're either interested you just, or you're yeah, right. not. You just like doing. It. I mean, I yeah. I like opening things up to see how they work. Yeah. And you and you like I think well, I like to see like we talked about probably the first episode, the IKEA effect of doing something ourselves. And how much money you can save from doing it yourself. Right. But honestly, if you can't do it yourself or you're going to do it badly, you'll pay twice as much. You'll end up paying twice as much having somebody redo it. But um, 
but yeah, it takes it takes someone who's interested in tinkering and interested in doing. I mean, you learned how to do electrical work properly and plumbing properly out of a book. We bought books from Home right. Depot or Lowe's or wherever. Those little ones that sit up next to the cash register yeah. that you never look at. <laughs> well, we did. That's where that's where Thomas was perusing the aisle to find the right book that would teach him how to do the things he needed to do and have it up to code instead of watching YouTube videos, which yeah. aren't as inclusive. You know, those books are like they're not going to tell you what bottom. electrical codes are. In a YouTube video. Right. They're, they'll show you how to do stuff. Right. But they're not going to say, you know, this is to code. It's not a complete you guide. You have your outlets a foot off the ground. Right. So the books did that for you. Right. So, you know, you had you had the interest, which I think, sorry, guys that's and gals. That's where it starts. I mean, truthfully, that's, that's where anything starts. So you have to be interested in wanting to do these things. I mean. Yeah. And there's no for guys and gals, the ones who ask you that question, there's no way to force your spouse into being interested in those things. They either are or they aren't. Mm -hmm. And as I always say, you either, for the most part, 99% of us either have time or money, but not both. And if your spouse is someone who is able to pay or as a family, you're able to afford to pay someone to do these things, don't be surprised if they're not going to want to do them. And I think a lot of people view that as, well, okay, I don't need a wall knocked out. I need a shelf put up. They don't want to do that either. They're not right. interested and that's okay. Yeah. You know? And so I, it's, it's amazing how much um, of the relationship stuff that goes into this kind of thing. Um, wanting something that doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that's that's a topic for another day, probably. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. So with that, we'll take our first break, and we'll be back in just a second. Welcome back. We are talking about um, executing the plan. We talked a little bit about where our background in construction came from. Uh, and it, and the next thing I kind of want to talk about is you have some background knowledge of how to do certain things, uh, but you, you know, just enough to get yourself in trouble, right? So when, when do you know that you should ask for help? When do you, when, when do you say, I need to hire somebody to do this? This is beyond my scope or do I say, I think I, I can power through this. Let me watch a few more YouTube videos and Google a few more things and read some more forums. Or do I just say, ah, let's just hire somebody else. Um, I think it's more than just the skill level also. I think that, that knowing enough to know when someone else can do things with their material costs and labor for the same price as it would cost you to do something is also a knowledge that will get you far. For example, I know in my business with landscape, you or I can go to Lowe's or Home Depot, a big box, a, a nursery, a local nursery, whatever, and buy a shrub here in Mobile in this area, around this area. A shrub retail costs about $28 for one shrub. A contractor can buy that shrub wholesale for $8 and install it for $25. So he's going to charge you $25 to insta install that shrub. You would have had to pay $28 plus tax to buy it. Plus your time to put it Plus in Plus my yourself. time to put it in. I've now hired somebody who can buy that material cheaper than I could and install it, and I never had to touch a thing. So the same thing goes for, I would think, anything in your house, right? Contractors have material pricing on some things, and so it takes the knowledge. And that's that, I think that goes back to what we talked about a couple episodes of ago of um, knowing enough right, about what you're about to do to be able to weigh all these options. Um, but uh, getting back to what you're talking about, I think you're more talking about the idea that, um, you know, you, if you bust down a wall or you knock out something that you're going to be able to fix it or it's not going to, something's not going to fall down before right. you can call somebody else to fix, you know, take care of it for you. Right. How far can you go? But, yeah, but I, mean, I, think I think it takes... it's different for everybody, obviously. It is, but it also takes... I think people always want to dive into knocking down a wall. I don't know what it is about a knocking down a wall, but everybody wants to start with that. It's empowering, I think. It is. It feels good, and Lord knows there's enough HGTV shows telling us that we need to knock down some walls yeah, between things. I think things. any HGTV show you watch, someone's going to sledgehammer a wall. Sure. It looks sexy, as they say, as I say, I guess. But like anything else, you're trying to run before you can crawl. 
So be right. realistic. I mean, all this is just like being honest with yourself and being being realistic. Right. If this is your first construction project, you're probably not starting with taking out a wall. I mean, you're we're starting talking, with. What are we even talking about construction? Hang a, hang a shelf up on the wall. Hang a picture straight. Can we right. start with that? Level level three. I'll say. I mean, pieces of framed art in a if row. If you were to ask me to frame a doorway or hang a picture where you wanted it. I would do the doorway right more often than I would hang the picture. Well, <laughs> that's fine, but there's there's a difference between doing it in the right spot and just the mechanics of understanding how to drill a pilot hole, how to install an anchor, how to drill. Knowing even if it needs an anchor. Yes. Could I find a stud? If I find a stud, I don't need an anchor. Yeah, I mean, there's people sitting there right now going, what, what are they talking even about? talking about? What is a stud? What is and, an anchor? And those are, the, those are the simple things that you have to do before you even think about knocking out a wall or doing tile or plumbing or any of those things, let alone being upset with whoever you're living with that they're not interested in doing those things. I think... I mean, it's it's similar with like budgets and things like that. Being honest with yourself about what you can really afford or what you can really do yourself will save you so much time and so much heartache and having conversations with like clear, concise words and no fluffing around, you know? Yeah, so, you know, to add to that, I do think... I mean, this really takes us back to kind of the first thing we talked about. It has to be something that you're interested in doing also. I mean, for me, in the very there's first a lot house of, that we lived in. There's a lot of women who are interested in their husbands doing a lot of things. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and that's what it comes down to. The women want their husbands or spouses, you know, whatever, partners, spouses, whatever, to to do something. And it's like, that's equated to anything else. You want your spouse to learn how to scuba dive, but they're not interested. Like, yeah. why are we forcing people to do things that they may not be interested in doing? You have to just at some point succumb to the fact that that's not the person that you married or the yeah, person that you're living true. with. But getting back to, you know, knowing when to ask for help. The very first house that we lived in, we took out a load-bearing wall right we, down the middle of the room. And I knew enough to call an engineer friend and ask right. them what we were doing before we did it because I didn't want and my I roof think, to cave in. I think I had read some stuff about it. You had. You were double checking. how to, you know, build support walls on either side before you take out the load-bearing wall and then how to support and what kind of beam over how long of a span. Yes. And I think no, having a math background obviously helps with yes. all of that. Like I, I understand... The geometry, I guess. I just, I guess, I just, I just understand what it's supposed to, how it all is supposed to work. But yeah, before we did that, we had an engineer come out to the house. I don't know where the guy came from. It had to have been somebody that we knew. It was the guy. There was an engineer that worked next door to the work when I still had, an, you know, was working in an office. And I said, "Here's what we want to do." I explained everything. Here's the span. Here's the whatever. And I said, we want to add this many beams and, you know, kind of gave him the rundown. And he's like, it sounds right to me. I'll come over and look at it just to be sure. So he mm -hmm. was there for 15 minutes and just, it was like, gave us a check. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. But, you know, another thing with, with execution that we haven't talked about, which is part of the podcast, is how our kids are involved in all of this. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, people ask me all the time what we do with the kids and things like that. From a young age, unless we were doing a pretty intense project that took days and days or required both of our hands on deck at all times, they were with us. There was times when we were installing like blowing insulation in attics and things that were totally too dirty for there to be kids running around in houses. And we have family in town. We've been highly supported by family, grandparents, aunts and uncles that are in town that will help take care of our kids when we need them too. Yeah. In, in the second house that we lived in, my parents lived two doors down. Mm -hmm. So it was very easy for you just to take the kids next door. Even if it was me with the kids, they weren't watching them necessarily, but right. we were all there. But and if I, had I was going to go. be cutting something in, or, you know, the time we blew insulation into our house, into the attic. That was a disaster. That stuff went everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't be anywhere near the house and you'd be inhaling. And we had big masks on. Mm -hmm. um, and when we came out of the attic, like we were covered completely. Yeah. But then after stuff. that, the kids are getting older and older. And at this point, the oldest is 12, the youngest is six. They are fully entrenched in understanding construction. 
it was just those baby steps. They didn't come out knowing about construction, and neither did you or I. I followed my dad around. We did all these different things, and now we're passing it on to our own kids. And so if you want to be the genesis of that and you want to start that, then that's good, you know? Well, I think that also kids are interested in things that their parents are interested in. Sure. I don't remember my parents really being interested in, in building things. I was kind of a, a lone wolf in that. Mm-hmm. I do think this is, we're getting deep into the psychology of things, but I was always the kid in the family that like when something broke, like my dad even would be like, take it to Thomas. <laughs> he'll fix it. I know he's only 11, but yeah. <laughs> he'll fix it kind of thing. My yeah. brothers, my sisters, they, they always knew like I was the guy that's going to fix something that broke. Yeah. I don't know where that came from. But I think we all have our, I mean, everybody's not going to be exactly the same or have exactly the same interests as their parents, you know? Sure, but that that came from somewhere. But getting back to our own kids, I think our children see us doing things. You know, I'm fixing the toilet, and they come in, and, and they, they just sit there and watch, like, what are you doing? How, did, yeah. how do you do that? You know, yesterday or this past weekend, we were digging the plants out, we're going to keep rubbing that in that I wasn't helping you dig the plants. I already know I this said is, we. This no is, one, if you didn't watch the other episode, they didn't know you weren't involved until you just outed yourself. You I, know? Well, I already know where this we, is. We, mm-hmm. it was really just me and Thomas, <laughs> were digging the plants out and we hit a sprinkler head and broke it off completely. So, you know, we finished the job and then I was like, hey, go get me these tools. He knew what the tools were. Yeah. Tool identification is like yeah, one of the first one oh one things. That's the best little kid job you yeah. have. Go get me the hammer. Go yeah. get me the which you're so good at. Pliers yeah, you're whatever. great at that. Thomas is way better at including the kids in whatever project he's doing and teaching them. I mean, he's a natural teacher. I am more of the I just want to get it done. I need everyone out of my way. And so if Thomas was not here, these kids would certainly not be learning the things that they're learning for I think sure they would do you remember when we were at our second house uh in midtown and <laughs> you were to underneath the house you were plumbing a new bathroom which again that was a new that was a new project don't ever go under there if you it looks like <laughs> super mario was down there with all those pipes they go you always said, everywhere you said you always said it looked like um, that screensaver with the pipes. Yes, that is exactly what it looks like. <laughs> if anybody used to have an old Windows PC, it was like Windows 95, and the screensaver would come on, and it would be colorful pipes that would just run back and forth all, all over, over the, the screen. Place. Apparently, that's what it looked like. Anyway, but the kids were not helping him whatsoever, but we were passing notes to him through the floor. So <laughs> I don't know why I thought of that, but I just remember the kids writing you little messages because they thought... them down the hole. Yeah, they thought it was yeah. the coolest thing that they could kind of see your little headlamp underneath the the floor and, you know, reach out to you while you're doing a job. Anyway, the point being that you're a way better, more patient teacher. I'm a lot like my mom in that way that I just want everyone out of the way. My dad was the teacher and it was like, come on, we'll learn something today. And mm-hmm. I learned stuff. <laughs> I learned stuff from my mom too, but it was not as, it wasn't in that same way. You know, and so. Yeah, but I think you wanted to learn, though, because your mom was doing it. It's kind of what I'm getting back to. I kind of I was an kids- observer with my mom more than I was a hands-on help. You know, these days we, we watch people see stuff on Instagram and different social media things where kids are, like, helping their mom cook in the kitchen and stuff. I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's nothing I would love less than for, You've like. You've done that before with the kids. I've seen you do it. What? They've helped you cook stuff in the kitchen. Really? Yes. On purpose? How do you not know I these let things? that happen? Yes. I don't know. I just, I you always. Block them out of your memory. No, something. I don't know. I always picture it as being, oh, guys, we're going to have all of our sprinkles over here and we're all going to have this like. It's not, it's not like, it's, it's arts not a, and craft time. It's. Yeah. You're cooking something and one of the kids will walk up. How do you, how are you doing that? And they'll watch you and you'll be like, go get the, the half a cup. We're going to put a half a cup of oil in I never in think of those as teaching moments. I don't know what's wrong with me. They def- I mean, but they are. I know. I've used- I think it, maybe it's a little harder because you're actually the one doing it, and you're not. I'm focusing on making like, the you cake. You didn't do a lesson plan for it. Yeah. It just like it kind of just happened. Yeah, naturally. but I see yours as the when you are showing the kids around doing stuff. I view that as teaching them and them learning stuff. But I think mine happened. You know, getting back to the broken pipe story, just as naturally. It just the, we didn't mean for the pipe to break. We pulled yeah. a, a thing out and it broke the pipe. Yeah. So, uh, hey, go get these tools. My favorite thing was when, how we do it. was when one of the kids, we had just put sheetrock up in the living room. 
and one of the kids came in and said something like, is that mud dry yet? Yeah. <laughs> They knew the process. Okay, I don't even know if I could have been more proud. <laughs> it's like, know why? That it takes time. Do not why, touch the mud while it's wet. Yeah, why are you eight years old and know that the mud needs to dry? That it, it's called mud. Right. For one, that it's called mud. <laughs> that it that it needs to dry before you touch it because I know that there are levels of sanding that happen, and that until there's enough sanding done, we can't paint like they know the whole process and it's so funny that it comes They've seen enough of it though at this point they have we've sheetrocked more walls yeah and painted walls and done yeah all these little projects that i think it's help an, but pay attention i to think you. it's been really good for them not just and in fact part of the reason why we so previous to this house that we're living in right now we lived in 1400 square feet with four children two adults and a doberman pincher back to people think we're nuts. And I cried and cried at the thought of moving to a larger house because I thought, what would that say about us that we can't deal? Like, we don't need a huge house, Catherine. We just, we're good where we are. And Thomas almost 100% convinced me based on the kids were so little when we did this project, they need to see another construction project when they are in the age where... They can actually do some of it. Yeah, and they'll remember it too. Right. So I don't know. That wasn't. I mean, I think I used that maybe as one of the selling points of. of I thought it was a good house. reason. I think it's a good reason now. All the stuff that they learned, they've learned how to take care of a pool. They've yeah. learned how to do all kinds of things that we didn't I'm even. I'm saying do. when we're done with this house, I'm not going to be like, "Hey, let's move to another <laughs> fixer upper," so the kids can learn more lessons. <laughs> you're we done. Have, we have grandchildren now. Let's let's yeah. buy another one. Yeah. So do you think you're done? Done. This is like with. people ask us about kids. Are you done? Done with fixing stuff up? No, done with, like, when we're done with this house, do you think you're done with fixer-upper houses? Because um, I kind of feel like I am. Maybe. Yeah, I, I tell you this all the time, that I like to do the work when I get to do the work, not when I have to do the work. And it, it's, it sounds like it's the same thing, but it's not. I get to do the work makes me feel like I have an opportunity to work on this thing that I've never got had to do before or learning a new skill I'm, it's going to look so good when i'm done like these archways i've never done them oh my goodness and you I, said you would never do them I will ever not now again because at now i see it as something that i would have to do not something i get to do you know it was it was a cool experience for the very first arch <laughs> like i get to build this there arch are, it's going to be there great. are three arches by the way <laughs> he and liked and it for like, the first now one. i have to do these next two because like, we can't so have good, one though. arch and then two squared off. You would have been fine with that. I, if I I would have been. If I said it was fine, you would have been like, woohoo. If you think the design looks good, <laughs> I'll sign off on it. <laughs> I love the arches. They're my favorite thing. Right now we live in a 1960s, early 70s maybe. We're not exactly sure when it was built. Two-story. I mean, we live in a, in a neighborhood full of ranch-style houses. So... Ours is two-story, which isn't exactly a ranch, but I would call it maybe like a Cape Cod cottagey type look thing. Bay windows on the front. I don't brick, even know brick facade. anything about <laughs> house naming. So. Two dormers on top with little window boxes. It's super cute. Super, super cute, but inside was very 1960s, 70s. As far as the layout. Um, wallpaper? Well, oh, layers of wallpaper everywhere. But it, all the all the doorways are standard with that. Um, 1960s, 70s uh, trim that goes around. And we had come from Midtown where you had all these beautiful moldings and trims all around the windows and doors. And so systematically, slowly but surely, we're taking out all of the old original trim in this house and putting up the more historic look that we loved so much. And it just gives it so much character and yeah. something different and custom. Yeah, I mean, this... We've taken a lot of the stuff that we've learned from the old house, you know, kind of pulling this all back together. Um We've learned a little along the way, but it's a lot of little things that now look like a big thing. So it looks like, man, we know so much about all this stuff and like it happened overnight. It didn't. It started off with doing little things like, let's put in a new floor here. Let's try to do some sheetrock on this wall. Let's take out a wall. Let's put up some new window trim. And before you know it, all these little skills now have added up to a lot of skills, so it looks like, man, y'all are professionals, and you just learned how to do this overnight. It's, I mean, it's 10 years worth, really more, I mean. 
It's a lot longer than 30 years. 30 years worth of stuff yes. that, that we've learned. Yeah. Like you said, you learned how to plumb when you were a little kid. 10. I was 10. So that was like 40 years ago? Shut up. <laughs> it feels like it. But no. Um, 27 years ago. So yeah, it's it's a lot of things that we didn't just learn overnight and we didn't learn it all in one place. You know, you learned some from your dad. I learned some just by trial and error. We learned out of books. We learned a lot from YouTube and Google. Asking people, watching watching the professionals do it. You know, I I didn't know how to roof. My brother works in construction. He showed me how to do it. You and didn't roof this house, though. No, I roofed the shed. Oh, yes. On you the roofed, old. yes. And we did some patchwork on the, the old roof, too. But so. we certainly hired this roofing job out. Because, oh, again, I, yeah. it would have someone taken could me, buy wholesale shingles when yes. we couldn't. They have the tools. Yes, to they do can. It. They can take off an entire roof and put an entire roof back on in one day or right. two days. They have a crew that comes out with eight, ten guys. Yes, roofs off in a day. Can you can imagine roofing this two. house by yourself. Like it's just. I'd still be doing it. It's like you need to line it up straight. All the things. But as far as back to executing, we execute at a at a very high pace compared to a lot of people. But that is who we are. That is just. That's just our speed. Mm. And I, you know, a lot of people ask how that happens. And it's just a personality thing. Some people are really great at planning parties. I am the worst at planning parties. And so much so that we have a template that we use at our house for parties, right. which luckily saves us money. And it's a very smart thing to do too. But in general, I'm a terrible gift giver. I'm a terrible party thrower. Um, there are lots of things that require planning and pretties that, that I am not interested in. They're not my hobby and I don't execute them. Construction and making this house our home is what motivates me to a large degree. So I'll do a lot of stuff real quick to get that done. Right. So it's just a personality thing. I think, I think to answer a lot of people's question, sometimes you just have to be okay with, this is not who I am. This is not who I'm married to. This is not who I live with. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's the answer that a lot of people probably want to hear, but that is the truth of the matter. I, and you guys, we both happened into this because, to be honest, we were 23 when we got married. Yeah, I had no idea. We had no idea what this would have turned into. No idea that Thomas would have been interested in renovating houses or interested in learning how to do all this stuff. No idea. I do think that's something that we need to come back to. Because I think that we may have known that about each other. We just, we didn't. You helped look for the house and you knew I wanted to flip no, it. Right. So this is going to be a deeper dive in a, in a later podcast. I believe that you know a lot about another person without knowing all the details about what that person thinks about specific things because you know generally about. You thought I saw something in you? I was like, ooh, this no, guy. No, I think that, you know. <laughs> I think that both of us value time a lot. We value hard work a lot. So when it comes to getting a job done, we want you to work your butt off and get it done on time. Yeah. Now, is that in your business? Is that in construction? Is it in making the kids do the dishes or clean the house? It, I mean, it could be anything. Yeah, I think If there you is... show up here on Saturday, I hand that list out mm -hmm. at... Nine o'clock in the morning, we're done at ten, mm -hmm. and it's a list. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's everything. Why? Yeah. Because just like a lot of other things, it's something that's been assigned. You know what the job is. You know how to execute the job. Go get it done. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I do. I expect a lot out of myself, and so I expect a lot of the people around me. And I think I'm the same way. Yeah. Now, our, maybe our personalities aren't exactly the same. But the question is, did we know that at 23 when we got married? I would. Again, I think this is a, a, a deeper dive for later, but I think we did. Without, we never would have said that to each other, but I think there were probably identifiable markers that we must have seen in each other. I don't know. I still to this day just think that it was, we got real lucky that we're still married to this day. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's a big part of it too, but. And that we're happy and, I mean. Because we didn't know what we were doing, and we still got married, and we're still here 14 years later. Like, whoa, baby. That's amazing. Yeah. we. I mean, we definitely got lucky. 
Speaking of patting ourselves on the back. You definitely got lucky. (laughs) (laughs) Well, let's take a little break. And (laughs) when we come back, we'll answer some questions. We are back with a Q&A from one of you guys. If you have any questions that you want to submit, you can send them to buildingarensburg at gmail.com. But as for this one, it is, how does it work day-to-day life with four kids, routines, and organization? So a big word you said there is routines. I think we are big routine people. You know, from the time the kids wake up, it is X, Y, Z, out the door. And then when we, you know, when we hit the bedtime routine button, whatever time that is, and that's not, that's not always at the same time every night. It's, it's roughly around the same time, but once, once the bedtime process has been activated, yeah, there's definitely a routine to it. So I, I do think that is a big part of how we get a lot done is and, we just have routines. Yeah. And 2020 in. being what it is, I think a lot more people are staying home, but that was 2020, as far as our daily life routine, it has not changed a lot for us. And a lot of people would go, oh, that means you're still going out and you're still... No, we didn't do those things before. Right. We stayed home all the time. That's what we do. Every Friday night, we watch a movie. Yes. We stay home as a family and watch a movie. Like, the kids go to school. They come home. They, there are four of them. They play together. They're playmates. Um, they have friends in the neighborhood that they play with um, that have since moved away, but that happened before. Um, and so... Our life, as far as routine, has not changed that much. We wear masks now, and we don't see our parents as much. That's right. probably about it. I think what they're referring to is when when you're doing the construction project, what is the routine? Oh, um, well, I mean, obviously a construction project is going to tear you out of your routine a little bit. Um, yes. But bedtime and wake up and all that stuff is always the same, no matter what our construction project looks like our construction projects don't go late into the night they don't you know we work around basically a daytime schedule and the, now a days the kids are helping for the right. most part they're yeah, involved they're getting the tools they're putting away the tools they're helping clean up sweep vacuum they literally are chiseling sheet rock off the wall sometimes or pulling nails out of the wall that's right. a big thing that they they did when we were doing our master bedroom so they are involved at this point um, and that's going to change obviously when, when they were little they were the routine was daddy's got to work, you would take the kids out somewhere so yeah. I could be knocking stuff down and not worrying about a little kid falling yeah. underneath it or picking up a piece of something and putting it in their mouth. But other than that, if something comes along, you know, back to the just four kids in day-to-day life, if Thomas has a meeting or I have a meeting, um, his his grandpa always used to say, Thomas's grandpa always used to say, it's not 50-50. Marriage is not 50-50. It's 100-100. And sometimes I have to give 110% because Thomas is only able to give 90. Talk about math equations. It's tough. Um, And you're constantly like recalibrating to figure out, you know, sometimes you're tired or sometimes you're stressed and you can't give as much and the other person's picking up the slack. And that's just life. Yeah. Um, So. I mean, as a football coach, there's four or five months out of the season, out of the season, out of the year. Where I'm just not around, and you're doing all of it. Yeah, I'm I'm doing all the housework, all the like I'm still working a full time job, getting kids from school, ba- you know, making sure they get do their homework, homework. get in the tubs, mm-hmm. get in bed, all those things. And, and then, then when, now that it's done, when football season come in, uh, is over, I'm like, here, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, your turn. <laughs> your turn. Um, Which again, I, I'm I'm ready for it. I mean, I I know that when when I'm in season. That you're, you're picking up all my slack, and there's a lot of slack to be picked up, and so as soon as football season ends, I'm ready to step in and and take over for, you know, in in the places that I haven't been. So, but I think that that goes back also to, as a couple, our we we think our family is the most important, and not just like oh, it should be the most important. It is the most important thing to mm-hmm. us, making sure that they do have their routine and they're getting enough sleep at night and they're being supported in school and, you know, all the different things. Like, that is the backbone of our family and those are our first priority and everything else is kind of, you know, to the back burner. Um, and so when you when you have that as your priority, 
you make sure it happens, even if there's a hole, like <laughs> you're gone or I'm gone or, right. you know, whatever it is. We you, make it You know what, it what, the, what the vision is. Yeah. And we just you Gotta need to execute. execute the vision. Oh, my gosh. I think that's where we have full to stop. Circle. We better stop right there. <laughs> that was full circle. Uh, so thank you for listening. Uh, be sure to check out our Facebook page. Like it. Our Facebook page is Building Aaronsburg. Our Instagram page is also Building Aaronsburg. And our email address is buildingaaronsburg at gmail.com. And if you'd like to watch us, if you're listening right now, and you'd really just love to see our faces and all of the awesome expressions that we make while we're talking. It really does add a little something extra. It does. <laughs> I've, as, as the editor, editor and producer, everything on this, <laughs> like I watch it, and it's that's a lot of fun is watching our reactions to the ridiculous things that we say sometimes. But if you'd like to watch, you can go to YouTube. Are we building Aaronsburg on YouTube also? We are building Aaronsburg on YouTube as well. You must have made that page. I didn't make that page. I did. Good job. Teamwork. I made the Facebook and Instagram. You made the email. 100, 100, 100, (laughs) right? All right. We'll see y'all next time. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. And then where the five came from. Yeah. To, here's where the five comes from. This is a really roundabout story. But those of you that like Top Gun, you'd appreciate this. Oh, I love Top Gun. So in the final scene, after Goose had died, Maverick. That was sad. Um, Your spo- is, spoilers, by the way. If, if you, you haven't, haven't seen, seen this Top movie, Gun. you, I don't, you just, you shouldn't be listening to this. You don't deserve to listen <gasps> to this podcast anymore. Mm, that was extreme. If you haven't anyway, seen it, Top Gun's a very good movie. You need to go watch it. I'll explain this last scene for you. It'll, you'll appreciate it more. Um, but the first two planes take off, and Maverick is now the third place guy. So he's sitting in his airplane on the deck of the carrier waiting to take off if they need him. He is known as the Alert 5 aircraft. Most people didn't catch that, but I catch it because I've seen the movie a million times. So after the first plane gets shot down, and it's just Iceman up there, he's by himself, they say, launch the Alert 5 aircraft. Well, who's Maverick? So that's where the 5 comes from. So Pronto Statin 5, that's like urgent, urgent, urgent. Iceman's by himself. Thomas. That's where we came to. This is not exciting information so, for everyone listening.